On stage 19 of the Giro d'Italia, Kun Bauman again took victory. A second stage win for him as he secured his hold on the King of the Mountains competition, only needing to stay on the bike to Verona to pick up the blue jersey. In the pink jersey fight, Richard Carapaz still held the Maglia Rosa. Three seconds his gap going into the final mountain stage. Jai Hindley was his closest challenger with Mikel Lander still at 105, a threat on the podium. So to the final mountain stage, the last road stage and the last road stage at the Giro d'Italia in the career of Vincenzo Nibali. Hindley was getting ready for Bora Hansgrohe. Carapaz tried to hold on and add to his lead. Three seconds for anybody, too nervous of a gap to take into a final time trial. The day would begin in Belluno and head into the Dolomites, a Dolomitic monster stage with three giant climbs to take on, starting with the Paso San Pellegrino. Paso Pordoi would be this year's Cimacopi, the highest point of the race, followed by an ascent past Malga Chapella to the Marmolado, or the foot of it, at Paso Fedaia. Four and a half thousand metres of climbing, the last road stage, the final mountain Dolomitic dance. As often has been the case in this Giro d'Italia, it took a little while for the breakaway to go. The legs try to force the issue on the first unclassified climb of the day. Eventually, a group of 15 would get up the road. Domen Novak for Bahrain victorious and Leonard Kemner for Bora Hansgrohe, two satellite riders to perhaps help out later on. Behind, Bahrain began to work, using the riders that most probably wouldn't survive the big mountain test to come. With 52 kilometers to go, Alessandro Corvi was at the front of the race. He attacked and took the Cimacopi, going over the Paso Pordoi in first position. He had a gap of two minutes and 20 seconds going into the bottom of the last climb of the day. Behind the break continued to break up and the Maglia Rosa group was still at six minutes and not much was happening. Domenovic just continued to follow before attacking himself inside the final five kilometers. Not necessarily just there as a man to help Mikel Lander in the finale. He quickly set to work to reduce the advantage that Colby had. Where Ineos Grenadiers began to work with the final five kilometers and the Paso Fedea proper beginning. The first victims were evident pretty quickly. Manuel Buchmann out the back. Sivakov took over after Tulit had done his work and Vincenzo Nibali began to lose contact as well. We were down to the top three, plus a couple of other riders hanging on. Hindley launched the first offensive. That did for Mikel Landa. Carapaz could follow. Remember, three seconds between them at this point. You remember that up the road, Leonard Kemner had been in the early breakaway and this is where he came into his own. Hindley rode up to him. Kemner continued to absolutely empty himself and empty the legs too of Richard Carapaz, who cracked inside the final three kilometers. Hindley then managed to really put the hammer down. Memories of 18 months ago, having taken the Maglia Rosa on the penultimate stage, but only leading by a fraction of a second and losing it in the time trial. He needed a big advantage here going into the last day. It was soon clear that Carapaz was on an awful day. The 2019 winner of the Giro d'Italia, having been in the pink jersey for a while, was even passed by Mikel Landa. Vincenzo Nibali also up there defending his own position. Corvi at the front, while all the drama was playing out behind, would take the stage. Novak having cut the gap to 30 seconds, unable to get any closer. Corvi taking his first Giro and Grand Tour stage win. Australia has never had a winner of the Giro d'Italia, but Crown Prince Hindley bowed before the Queen of the Dolomites, the Marmolada, with a big, big gap in front of Richard Carapaz. 1 minute 25 would be the gap at the end of the day. Lander got closer to the second spot on the podium. Carapaz did his level best to save things, but it looks like it will be heartbreak and a second position should only be the best he could achieve going into the final day. Barring incident, accident or an absolutely terrible time trial, Jai Hindley will become the first ever winner of the Giro d'Italia to come from Australia. Both he and Corvi congratulated each other. 
UAE Emirates got their stage win. And after a day of waiting for many things to happen, the drama was condensed into a 15-minute period of action. Corvi winning the stage ahead of Novak. Ciccone with another podium on the day. Pedrero, Arensman, and then Hindley ahead of Lander and the rest. Jai Hindley, just as he did 18 months ago, pulling on the pink jersey at the top of a mountain on the penultimate day of the race. This time, however, he has a much bigger advantage. From just less than a second ahead of Theo Gegenhart, who eventually beat him in 2020, to now 1 minute and 25 over the former Giro winner Richard Canapaz. With Mikel Lander at 151, Nibali in his final Giro is going to finish very lightly in fourth place at 757. Pay your bill, Bilbao, the other Bahrain rider in the top five. And this is what the last day will look like in fair Verona, where we lay our final scene of this three-week soap opera. A 17-kilometer time trial, one that's not simple, with Torricella climb in the middle at a finish inside the Verona arena. Similar to the one that we saw when Richard Carapaz won the Giro d'Italia in 2019. This year, though, barring any sort of strange event, that honor should go to Jai Hindley. You can watch the final stage of the Giro d'Italia on GCN+, Discovery+, and on the television on Eurosport.